Good, uh, good morning. Thanks so much to all of you for being here, for Lisa Ann, for putting together this fabulous program, and for those of you who have not met her, Felicia Bellows. Felicia called me a number of months ago and said, Suze, Saturday morning, I, I will admit I have three young children and I travel a lot. Um, and she said, Saturday morning, come to, come to Google. There she is right there. And I said, uh, no. Um, and then she said, you know, women and sustainability. I'm like, how can I not, I not show up here? Um, this fabulous group of women who are focused really on, on the most important and pressing issues of today. Um, I'll give you a minute or two of my background. Um, I came out of law school in 1993. I went to New York. I met a boy. He was in tech. I moved to California in 96. And I will say, because I think we're about to go through sort of a difficult economic time, the best thing that happened to me was the tech bubble bursting in 2001. The best thing ever, because my husband had been at Oracle for years. He quit. He actually became a park steward in the Presidio where we live. Um, and we actually sold, I mean, we believe in sustainability so much, we sold all of our belongings and, and moved into the national park. But it was after years of him being a park steward. Before that, I, I used to say, you know, I moved money for the big boys and, and he did good. And in 2001, I didn't have a lot of work. And so all of a sudden, I came home and there were all these Birkenstock wearing, tree hugging, sustainability types in my living room. And I started actually having time to see them. I also had time to get pregnant. Um, but um, I came home and I think sustainability, sustainability led me to, to, to energy, which led me to impact. I really think sustainability is like the red pill. And I will tell you my perspective. I was interested that we, we talked a little bit about the cliff. Um, for those of you who have not read it, I'm a, I, I love economics. I actually love what I do in terms of doing deals. Um, and there is the father of modern quant theory, a guy called Bob Litterman, um, who headed quant the quant fund at Goldman Sachs for something like 30 or 40 years. And for those of you who are not aware, there is a bunch of boys, men, in New York City who have made a lot of money, and some of them are also taking the red pill and seeing sustainability. And some of them are doing what the typical Silicon Valley model is, well, you made a bunch of money, so let's serve and give some back on some boards which is nice, but the model we need to move to is the model that they are starting to embrace, which is, no, we need to change the structural systems of our world around us. And Bob Litterman has looked across, and he has this excellent, excellent analogy. He actually is a Nobel Prize winning economist. And he has looked around and said, basically, he believes now that the combination of energy and water and population. And for those of you who looked at kind of what happened in the Calais jungle, that is just the beginning. With climate change and economics and food shortages and water, we are gonna have the most massive population shifts we have ever, ever seen in the history of the world. And all of that is gonna to lead to a lot of pressure. And he, he says, you know, population, energy, water, natural resource constraints, all of that means that we are headed for a cliff. Um, and we don't quite know how deep it's going to be. We don't know exactly when we're going to hit it, but we know that we're going to hit that cliff. And the issue is that all of the economic models of this country, all of them, underlying policy and business, are flawed because they, they actually are based on the premise that before we hit that cliff, we will be able to gradually apply the brakes. But everybody in this room, even if we devoted, and I'll get to it in a second, trillions of dollars to affecting change through energy and clean technology, we're not going to make a difference. It's like buying your Prius is putting a tiny grain of sand in a brook that is flowing. I don't want to you because there are lots of, lots of great opportunities, but we need to do an incredible amount more. One of the things we need to do is, if you haven't read him, I mean, he loses me after a few pages. I mean, I've had lunch with Bob because now I'm kind of a groupie and I want to hear what he's doing. But some of these folks are doing fantastic stuff. I mean, Bob has put together a syndicate of all of the airlines. It's not talked about. It's not in the New York Times yet. Um, and it really is to try to figure out how we can price carbon and how we can actually start having viable solutions to climate change. So with that introduction, I do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I want to start with, and I just want to talk for a few minutes today to introduce you to something that's sort of cutting edge and is not talked about a lot. And that is really this, this intersection between sort of energy and clean technology on one side and impact on the other. And what is interesting to me is that people are focused on energy and clean technology or they're focused on impact. 
but the two are not blending in a way I think that they can and should to be very, very effective for solutions. And so how many people know it's up there, but what happened yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, COP21 took effect. Um, and I was actually at, at Harvard Business School yesterday um, speaking with a bunch of, of, of new corporate forums and investors in this space, including uh, big boys. I mean, I, I used to represent small impact investors here. Now I represent Goldman Sachs that is doing this. Um, but the focus, I mean, and COP21 took effect. And first of all, you have the premise that even if we can, we can reduce carbon emissions by 2% across the globe, we're still, we're still going to be in a radically different world. The cliff is going to happen. Um, but the fact that all, most countries of the world, India is a bit of an issue, have agreed to try to reduce carbon emissions. What does that mean for you guys in terms of, of entrepreneurship, in terms of investment, in terms of new technology? It means that there, are, there have to be trillions and trillions of dollars that are invested in this space. I mean, the estimate is about 2.21.5 uh, trillion. So what's happening in the renewable? I'll just say across the renewable sector, there's a whole bunch of money going in, but it's a fraction uh, of what we need. And at the same time, on the other side of the equation, you all call it sustainability, there is a great growing investment in what's called impact, investors that are looking for ESG or environmental or social or governance um, returns in addition to financial returns. It used to be called DB uh, double bottom line or triple bottom line. It's increasingly called ESG. And what is interesting is in addition to all the money that's going into renewables, a lot of money is going into this sector. You know, TPG just set up um, an impact fund. Bain has set up an impact fund. This is getting to be mainstream in terms of investment. Um, and it is, it, is, it is very, very broad. I just wanted to mention some of these investors are what are called impact first. This is an extension of philanthropy. A lot of these investors are actually looking for market rate returns. And they believe, like sort of newly, newly minted and now very, very um, active Obvious Ventures, the partners of Obvious Ventures believe that if they strive to, to invest in companies and solutions that, have, that, that, that address the most pressing issues of today, they're going to have the highest returns. And, and there's a lot of work being done sort of across the spectrum in impact investing. And so the question is, how do those two relate? Typically, you have you know, your energy companies over here, your clean technology, and then you've got impact. How can they work together? Because if we deploy more capital to renewable energy and clean tech solutions, obviously, we have more of a chance of, of, of addressing the cliff that we're headed to. Um, and it is happening. Um, and so one of the things I wanted to just touch on is if you are in either of these spaces, sort of the impact sustainability space or the energy space, what can you think about? What are some best practices that you can employ? Um, number one is you can think about using a new corporate form or changing your form, particularly if you're an LLC, to embed impact. I'll explain that for a minute or two. I think I've got two minutes left, so I'm going to be really fast. Uh, number two, you can play with your debt or equity instruments and, and include impact in there. And number three, you can really have a robust means of measuring and reporting, not just on your financials, but also on your positive environmental impact. So are you ready for 30 seconds of each of these? <laughs> And it is hard for me because those of you who know me, corporate form matters more to me than anything other than my children. And if you ever just want to take a class, I, I teach a class at Berkeley Law School and Business School. I also guest lecture at Stanford. If you want to sign up for one of them, I'll take you in great depth. But corporate form underlines all of our structures of today. And maybe they'll give me one extra minute so I can talk for a minute on corporate forms. So they're incredibly important. What is happening in this space is corporate forms, traditional forms, are being used for impact using various means. How many of you are with energy companies? So one of the interesting things that I have been doing with energy companies, if you have an LLC that is holding project assets, after actually putting a mission statement in that, and then having a means to measure and report on the carbon emission reduction for purposes of COP21 so that you can capture that carbon emission value. And all of that is embedded in the traditional corporate forms. You now have corporate law has evolved more over the last five years than in the previous 100. There are now new corporate forms. There are a variety. I, 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 yeah, it's so hard for me to do this in 30 seconds. Um, I was actually one of the authors of the SPC and the PBC 
basically what these do, and these are designed, the PBC, the, the first PBC is going public on the New York Stock Exchange. These forms, you have an affirmative fiduciary duty as a board or a manager to shareholder agreed goals, which it can include environmental sustainability. So the power to affect change, people like me drafted these so we can change Chevron. If you think about the BP oil spill, if BP's board and directors had an affirmative fiduciary duty to shareholder agreed environmental concerns that they had to report on and that they could be sued on, that's a game changer. Of course, there are a lot of other game changers I'm a corporate law. I only really know about corporate law children, my children and swimming. So, I mean, there are a lot of other things out there. I get it. But so there, there are these new corporate laws. Um, tandems, hybrids, if you're at a normal c corporation and you want to set up a .org, if you've got enough resources in terms of leveraging the power of a nonprofit, this is happening a lot. I'm doing it with unicorns like Planet Labs um, to have a sort of non-commercial uses of their products or services out in the market and then linking it back. Um, financing instruments blending mission in, but then importantly, all of you who are working on technology that can reduce carbon emissions, thinking about how you do that and how you capture that future value. Um, is just really, really exciting. Again, green bonds, social impact bonds, which are not bonds. Um, but I mean, some of these are just use of proceeds. Some of these are just people giving you money and saying, make sure you build solar. Others of these are very, very thoughtful. And I'll just pause for a second. The value, I can't tell you in a dollar amount, the value associated with carbon emission reduction because we don't have a viable price for carbon. But if you are building renewable energy assets and you can go to the US government and say, you know, or you can go to your investor and and say, through my, your portfolio investing in me and through your investments, you have reduced carbon emissions by blank based on offlining traditional fossil fuels or more efficiency build, efficiently building and developing. If you can do that with your clean technology, there will be value and making sure that you capture that now because if you don't, um, it may be lost. And then finally, really, really important, uh, measuring and reporting, which I just talked about. There is a very, very, how many of you are clean technology companies? So very, very exciting movement at the public company level in this country called integrated reporting and changes in the SEC rules, which means very soon, and some companies have already started, public companies will have to start reporting on various ESG factors in their 10Ks and 10Qs. So I'm, you're going to let me just finish this thought. So what does that mean for you? You've got your small startup here in Silicon Valley. You are building this cool technology. It means as soon as the public companies have to measure, and these are the key things they're looking at measure, because they're material to operations, and they have to report, first they need mechanisms, they need technologies to measure. But but second, they also need to improve. I do a lot of work, and our firm does a lot of work for Apple, which is why we can't represent Google. Um, and, um, but Google is fabulous. We love them. Um, and, and one of the things that's interesting um, is that you know, when, when Google has to is required to report out, all the good stuff that they're doing is going to be fabulous. But everybody else is going to look and say, now we have a benchmark. Google's doing it. We have to do it, too. It is going to drive an incredible amount of demand for the sector. And that's it.